Have you seen any of these places? This one or this one or maybe this one or maybe this beauty? If yes, you know what I'll be talking about today. If not, these were all buildings of the Ministry of the Interior of the Czech Republic. One of the most hated institutions in the Czech Republic. Why is it so? And what can you do to make your experience better? This and way more in today's video. Stick with me. So why is the MOI one of the most hated institutions in the Czech Republic? To sum it up, shithole locations, rude stuff, messy paperwork, and delays, delays, delays. If you have ever been there, you know it. Things that should last or take the ministry 60 days can take two years. Uh, whenever you go there, you're basically playing the, the Russian roulette uh, and hoping that you will meet the one person who's in a good mood that day. Or maybe you are one of the lucky ones and they even have lost your documents. But whatever your experience was, I bet my used panties that it hasn't been amazing. To make sure that you will get out of the hell alive, I've prepared four plus one tips on how to deal with the Ministry of the Interior. The first two will be kind of boring, but super important. Number four might be even a bit entertaining, basically for everyone involved. And uh, one extra tip will be your joker. That will be your golden ticket to a perfect experience at the Ministry of the Interior. So let's go. Tip number one is to come prepared, both knowledge-wise and paperwork-wise. Because you can be sure that if there is one thing that will always piss off everyone at the Ministry is if you come there and you're missing half of the documents. It kind of makes sense because it adds more work to them and it complicates the processes, so they don't like it. But also for you, if you're missing half of the documents, you can easily complicate the whole process and it can lead even to a denial because if you're missing something, they have to request the documents from you, they give you some deadlines, they send it to some address which might, you might not have changed yet, and it just can complicate the process. So if you can prepare everything properly, have all the documents ready, and only go to the Ministry of the Interior to submit your application for whatever it is when you have all the documents together and when you're sure that they are correct. Like going there and having just the application and the stamps is okay if you're like, if you cannot do anything else, if it's your last day and you're waiting for all the documents to come through, but if you can plan it in the way that you have all the documents ready when you go there do that. That will save you a lot of stress and a lot of uh, unpleasant dealings with the Ministry of the Interior. Then also, uh, if you go there and you have no idea exactly what you will be applying for, what are the rules, what documents you should have, it's easy for the Ministry officers to tell you something and just send you home because you don't know if they are lying to you or if they are just incorrect. I. I've seen this many times, basically, when we go to the Ministry of the Interior, that the people on the branch at the counter, they don't even know the law exactly. And they would tell us, if, if you went there yourself without our assistance, for example, and they could tell you, yeah, you cannot submit this application. It's not possible. And if you don't know that it is possible, you just go home and take it as, like, as a fact. But it might just be not like it, it, might, it might just be a bad knowledge of the officer at the Ministry of the Interior. So it's very important to have all the documents prepared and to be prepared for the process and know what to expect there and what are your rights and what you can do and what you cannot do. Tip number two, come at least 15 minutes prior your appointment. This might sound like a stupid mistake, but I see it Basically, every time I go to the ministry, someone is sprinting to the information desk and saying, ah, yeah, my appointment was one hour ago, but my grandma's cat got lost and we had to look for it. Eh, eh, whatever bullshit excuse. <laughs> and if you start your appointment this way, 
you can be sure that it will not go well. <laughs> so also you can you can if you go there in time, you can take the number uh, 30 minutes in advance uh, before your appointment. So if you go there 30, 30 minutes in advance, you have time to mentally prepare, to calm down, to make sure that you have all the documents, really check them again. And you might even get in early and you might get out of the ministry early before even like the official time of your appointment. So definitely come at least 15 minutes prior to your appointment. There might be queues, you know, for the ticket machines. There might be some problems. And if you just come exactly on time, that's not a good start. And now we are getting to the fun parts. Uh, number four, I'm especially looking for that because I have something beautiful planned for you. Uh, but number three is no brainer. And that's be nice to them. Because the mood you come in uh, sets the whole mood of the whole meeting. So if you go there and you're grumpy yourself because you came late, you didn't come in advance and you had to run and you got the ticket from the information desk and they were already angry at you at the information desk because you were late and now you run to the counter and you're angry then it will not go well so that's all connected you know if you have all the documents ready you know that you'll be good you have everything if you know what you are going to do there you you are you can be calm because hey i know that i'm supposed to submit in submit in this and i have all the documents needed for that then you come in time, you come early. So you're, you're there in time. You can go through all the documents together or like not together, probably not together with them, but you can go through the documents again, make sure that you're ready. And then when they come uh, call you to the counter, you can be nice, calm, smile, maybe make some jokes and start the meeting in a good manner. They're also just people on the other side, stressed, unknowledgeable sometimes, grumpy sometimes, but they're just people. And if you make some uh, interesting intro or if you make them laugh, if you're just nice to them, it will be good and it will completely change the mood of the whole meeting and your overall experience. Number four, know at least some check words and ideally some crazy ones. Because if you go there and you say, Dobri den, uh, first, everyone knows that. Second, Everyone at the ministry knows that it's the only phrase you know. Uh, so instead of like using the check words as some kind of icebreaker or something to set up the mood in a good way, it will be like, oh, of course, another foreigner who only knows Dobri Den and they're like pretending. But if you go there and say, Moje kočky v noci šukali, like my cats fucked at night, that will be a total icebreaker and I guarantee you that you will make the people laugh and then they will do everything possible for you. <laughs> no, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, they're not supposed to speak with you in English. That's kind of their protection because if they tell you something in English and uh, you maybe don't understand it well or you do something different, it could be partially their fault because their English might not be like correct or whatever. But if they tell you everything in Czech and you don't understand, that's your problem. So that will never have anything to do with them. It's your problem and you have to sort it out. They have no responsibility. So that's one of the reasons at some ministries or some branches, there is a special person. It's usually like one or two people who are so-called intercultural workers who are supposed to speak with you in English, but these are the only people there and they kind of provide actually a good service so if you're lucky and you meet one of the people uh then yes everything is good but if you're not and you meet someone who only speaks czech or who is not in a good mood like a good icebreaker using some fancy or strange czech words can actually help you a lot to set up the mood and make them more willing to deal with you and the bonus tip number five is or four plus one is to have a Czech speaker or ideally also someone who understands the processes at the Ministry of the Interior with you. Because it will save you a lot of nerves, a lot of time and a lot of nerves again if you take someone who speaks Czech and who can not only translate what they are saying but also understands what they mean by that. Because they sometimes can tell you something 
but it's the official information like bring us proof of your income but i don't know why i did this accent but whatever uh but you don't actually know what it means if you're a freelancer does it mean this or that uh so having someone who can not only translate but also understand what the ministry means is a huge huge benefit and if you haven't understood that yet i co-founded and I co-own a company called Move to Prague Relocation Services, which is the best relocation and immigration agency in the Czech Republic, which we founded with an amazing human being called Daria uh, 10 years ago. And we obviously help people with going to the Ministry of the Interior, preparing you for any interviews there, checking all your documents, applying at embassies. So if you need any help with that, we just want to have someone uh, to back you up, get in touch with us with, through all the links in the description of the video or everywhere, basically, and we'll be happy to help you. So that's it. Uh, if you found this interesting, uh, useful or entertaining, please like it, share it. Uh, if you have any questions regarding whatever I talked about here or anything else about immigration in the Czech Republic, please comment. I reply all the comments, so I will be happy to reply your questions here as well. Or of course, get in touch. And remember that I do live streams on different platforms, usually in my TikTok, Jan underline Kalina, uh, but also Facebook and Instagram every Monday and Thursday. And I do Q and A's there. So if you have any questions and you want to like get them answered by me, uh, join one of my live streams and I'll be happy to answer them as well. Thank you very much, guys, and see you next time.